Adventurers, outdoor people, welcome back. Sure sticks off the back of the truck pretty far, doesn't it? Doesn't look normal, does it? Well, if you watched our last video on the assembly and installation of the Yakima Holdup Evo 2, you'll remember that we ran into a problem due to the design of the of the tray rack itself, as well as the particular hitch that I have on my truck. This is the update video where I'm gonna tell you how we solved that and why I'm probably gonna be returning this bike rack and getting a different one. So stay tuned. You left me all alone, yeah, outside in the cold. Wanted to come over, wanted you to know how I'm getting over. Like a set of foe, your heart is fucking cold. I'm better off. You know, there are a lot of things to like about this tray bike rack uh, that Yakima's put together. It has some great design features. There's a lot of features that I really liked about it. So before we get into why I'm probably gonna return it, let's get into why I bought it and the good things that it does have to offer. Well, the fantastic things, which is not unique to Yakima, is that you can actually lock your bike to the bike rack itself. It does hold bikes uh, with the unique geometry that a lot of mountain bikes these days have. Uh, which is perfect and why I would want a tray style bike. Uh, as you saw in our last video, there are different ways to mount these on other type of bike racks. There's just a convenience factor with the tray rack style. Uh, this can tolerate up to a 48 inch wheelbase. However, uh, I, I do know people that have put 50 inch wheelbases on these before. Uh, and it does tolerate a, a wide variety and range of tire sizes and bike styles, anywhere from road bikes to downhill bikes with wider, fatter tires, as well as the uh, electric bikes that people are starting to get into these days. It's very quick and easy to remove your bike from the rack, which is part of the reason why many of us buy this style of rack. Let's take a look at some other features. One of the things that is unique about this particular rack is you have a foot actuated pedal that allows you to drop it down to mount your bike. Makes it pretty easy. You don't have to set your bike down to do that. Yakima does make an extension that can go on this, so you can actually hold four bikes with this, as well as they have I don't know what it's called, but they do have an adapter that you can put on this uh, that allows you to actually swing the bike rack out from the vehicle so that you can get to the back of the truck. Now, for those of you that don't have trucks and might need to be able to get into your trunk or you have a hatchback of some kind, there is a feature that allows you to drop it down with a bike with the bikes on there so you can get access to the back of your vehicle. Now, before we get into one of the major cons and flaws that I found with this bike rack, at least for my particular setup, I do wanna point out that I am in no way bashing Yakima uh, whatsoever. I have several Yakima products. I really truly believe in the company that make good products. I have a very expensive rack here uh, that I put my rooftop tent on. Uh, you guys probably seen a video of me installing that, but for everything that Yakima tried to do, they kind of failed and they focused on the wrong problems. Because of the style of hitch receiver that I have, inside of my hitch is a reducer slip piece. The way that this particular rack is designed is to go into a two inch hitch receiver. This is the two inch one. They do make a one and a quarter for cars. When you turn this dial, it activates a clamping mechanism that's meant to clamp inside that receiver. Well, if you have a standard two inch receiver, that works just fine. However, when you get into your larger style trucks such as mine and the three quarter ton or even the one tons, uh, we have either a two and a half or even in some cases a three inch hitch receiver. So in order for us to be able to haul two inch receiver type hitches for towing different types of trailers, there's an, actually an adapter piece, a, re a reducer that slides in there and is required to have a pin that goes through and through to hold it in place. Therein lies the big problem uh, with this particular rack and my setup. It makes this rack significantly more difficult and more inconvenient to mount and have on the truck for a daily purpose. So let's take a look at the couple of those reasons why. Now, because of the design of the tray rack itself, I had to get an extension. The reason why I had to get an extension is because I have a two and a half inch receiver with that reducer piece in there. This is designed to clamp against that. And what we found out from the other video was that even though the clamping mechanism worked, it clamped to the receiver. And because there wasn't a through and through pin that went all the way through, as you can see, their pin doesn't go all the way through. It just grabbed a hold of that reducer piece and it slid right out. So that's why I had to get this extension 
extension, it's a seven inch extension, which is what is causing this to sit so far out. Part of the design uh, purpose of having that clamping mechanism is to keep the rack from rocking around. That only works between these two pieces. So I actually ended up having to get a clamp to prevent this piece from rocking around itself. Further, especially in a two inch receiver, this doesn't make any sense. This pin uh, that Yakima uses is a quarter inch or maybe three eighths of an inch. Most holes in a two inch receiver are five, in, five eighths inch wide. Uh, so this pin literally serves fundamentally no re no purpose because it just can rattle right out of there. And this is supposed to be your basic safety feature, your, your, your redundant backup safety feature, that if this clamping mechanism in here fails, that pin should still hold it in place. So let's go ahead and take this thing out uh, so that we can take a look at the reason why I'm just gonna go ahead and return this particular bike rack and get something different. Right here you have this dial. It's not connected to anything right now, so it's not loosening or tightening anything. It's a locking mechanism uh, that is designed to lock the rack to the truck. Now, kudos to Yakima for solving this problem, but they were trying to solve two problems that weren't problems. So in order for us to get this to work, we have to activate the key and then loosen this piece up. Here's the mechanism right here. What this is designed to do is as you tighten this knob down, it sucks this wedge in and this wedge kind of pushes out and holds it against the receiver. And this is basically what the locking mechanism is as well. Once you turn that key, this dial just free spins and you can't unscrew this. But this is also is what holds the rack in place so it doesn't rock back and forth. If you have a standard two inch receiver, this likely won't become a problem for you. I do want to point out that I do view this as a point of failure. Simply because there's no through and through pin, and unfortunately because of this mechanism, you're not able to drill and put one through the other side. But if you have a standard two inch receiver, you're not going to have to go through all the trouble that I do to add all these different components to make this bike rack work for my pickup. If you have a two and a half or a three inch receiver, you are going to have to go through these steps. The fundamental purpose of this device is to both lock and clamp it to the truck. One, to lock it for security reasons, which frankly isn't a problem for most people. Uh, Yakima tried to solve a problem that's not a problem. Most people have uh, locking hitch pins uh, no different than this one. So I don't really need the rack to lock to the truck using this mechanism here, I have one of these. The other problem that Yakima attempted to solve with this, and they did, don't get me wrong, the other problem that Yakima solved with this that I also feel wasn't really a problem to begin with was the rack moving back and forth. That problem can be solved simply with a $25 clamp like this one that clamps around the hitch and tightens it down so that it can't rattle and it can't move. So that's why I say that Yakima tried to solve two problems that fundamentally weren't really problems. That's why this rack isn't going to work because as I showed you from the previous video, I have this reducer piece that goes into my two and a half inch hitch to reduce it down to two inches, which defeats the entire purpose of this mechanism. So if you have a two and a half or a three inch uh, hitch receiver opening that requires a reducer, this simply is not gonna work for you at the end of the day. It's going to require you to get something like this, such as an extension, that lines these two holes up, requiring you to use this so that you can actually put the bike rack receiver into something where the clamp actually works. It's basically kind of pointless at that point because this still moves inside the hitch receiver requiring me to have a clamp so that the rack doesn't move around. Furthermore, because those of us with two inch receivers or larger typically have five eighths inch holes and this pin doesn't go all the way through, there's just simply nothing holding this in there besides this clamp. Instinct tells me that anything mechanical like this ultimately can and will fail at some point in time. If this was just a standard two inch receiver with a 5 8 inch hole, there would be absolutely no problem with this bike rack and I would absolutely love it. Now for those of you that are Jeep people, uh, you guys have seen on the channel, my wife has a Tuscadero Jeep uh, Rubicon. This bike rack does not fit on a Jeep as it stands right now uh, because of the spare tire on the back. It requires an extension just like this, which is why I wasn't mad about buying it because I would have needed it for my wife's Jeep anyway. And uh, here's a picture, uh, it works, it works just fine. However, that still begs the need to have a locking pin coming from the Jeep as well as a clamp uh, set up to clamp this receiver or this adapter into the Jeep receiver so that this doesn't shake around. So there is proof that that will work with a Jeep. Absolutely, it will work. 
and this bike rack actually is quite heavy. I think it's around 43 pounds, uh, but it can hold a tremendous amount of weight uh, for what it does. But with all things considered, given the fact that this mechanism is kind of useless to me, it makes this bike rack useless. When you consider all the factors uh, of having the reducer, the extension, the clamp, and a separate locking mechanism, it really nullifies this design feature that they've put there Hence why I keep saying they tried to solve a problem that's not a problem. As much as I want to like this, I, I talked myself into buying it, and I really, really, really wanted to like this. It has all the features that I was looking for in a bike rack. Unfortunately, this part right here is why I have to return it, and it's just not going to work for me. I am very concerned. Sorry, we have cougars here, so I gotta keep I gotta keep my eyes peeled. Unfortunately, there is no backup safety feature if this clamp system fails. I just don't think it's gonna stand the test of time. I think that this bolt in here can get uh, stripped at some point in time. When you're driving down the road and everything's vibrating, there's nothing really stopping that thing from loosening up, to be honest with you. And if this were to fail, given that, you know, my truck, as well as many other trucks, have a 5 8 inch hole. This pin just isn't going to do the trick at holding it in there. There's just too many drawbacks and too many issues uh, with this particular design setup that's just not going to work for me. And I'm going to return it. My goal is not to talk people out of buying this. Uh, my goal here is to let people know who have a similar setup before they do buy it uh, to understand the hitch receiver style that they have and all the things that they're gonna have to go through to make this thing work for them. And Yakima does, they make really great products. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Yakima. It's why I wanted to keep this so that, you know, everything was Yakima. But unfortunately, it's just not gonna work. My goal here is to prevent people from making the same costly mistake that I did and misunderstanding how this design feature worked and how it was gonna factor in with your style of hitch. I would like to point out that you don't technically have to use uh, a clamping setup like this. However, if the goal is for this thing to not rattle around and shake around when you're driving down the road, because there is some play in the hitch, and that's the whole point of this feature is to prevent that. Well, when you use an extension, you lose that design feature. So it kind of makes this pointless. You don't have to use one of these, uh, but if your goal is to prevent it from rattling around, this is really the only thing you need. Well, that's gonna be it for today, adventurers. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. Uh, especially some of you Jeep people and those of you who don't have a standard two hitch receiver. Uh, hopefully it'll help you make a, a more informed decision on which tray rack you want to buy. It is a significant investment and you're going to want that tray rack to be around for a long time. Till next time, hope to see you out there.